Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rosemary Collier and on behalf of the Commissioners of Public Works, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here today for this very special occasion, the opening of the newly refurbished Custom House Visitor Centre. And I have been asked to remind you just of our COVID restrictions so that everybody might keep their masks on for proceedings and if you can achieve social distancing that would be great too so thank you very much and this was a project uh, I'm so proud of this project and, and opening it today that was completed almost entirely during the COVID pandemic uh, so it has been a wonderful achievement for the people involved so I'd like to first invite please Minister Dara O'Brien Minister for Housing Local Government and Heritage to begin the formal proceedings thank you Uh, thank you very much, and Gurumila Magwiv Galair and Erdus Kurum Fear Falche, Gurwilagwina, Quig Chak and Custom and You, is Oat Spishilta Staru Ishae, and Erdus Boatlum Mamila Mamila Buikisha Gual, the Gokdin a Glock Parts, Chunskadal Tavak Dukshin, Rinashid Sore Job. Um, August time Kinja, August Tashi Kart, uh, Gomeg Shiv on Brodul as a quid Ibra. Uh, it is, uh, I would say, a great day to be here and I'd like to welcome uh, my, my colleagues and acknowledge uh, Minister Patrick O'Donovan, Minister Peter Burke, and indeed Paul Kelly uh, from Falja, Ireland. And it's a great pleasure to be here um, on a special day for this very special building here in Dublin. Um, and what really is for me important to see the magnificent work that's been done by all the contractors through the OPW, Minister Donovan, it's, and as I said earlier, people should be really proud of, of the work that they, have, uh, that, they've, that they have been engaged in here. I've actually seen some of it at different stages as we move through, and the fact that all this has been done through a very difficult time of COVID uh, really further adds to the, the magnificent um, achievement that it is. We're very committed to this place and as a Northside dub uh, it's great for me to see another facility here, another visitor centre of such high quality here that explains what this house is all about, that for four centuries uh, the Custom House here has played a, a central role in the life of, of Dubliners and in the, life, in the lives of our country. And when you get a chance to have a look through the visitor centre here it, in such a magnificent way actually explains the various stages right from the design uh, right the way back to Gandon to Beresford how this all all came about and the OPW and Kieran you should be uh, from the state architects perspective as well uh, so proud of all the work that's been done here um, I was even brought up on the on the roof on scaffolding to actually view some of the magnificent uh, um, sculptures there and that's all explained so well so for people coming in here that pass this building um, on a daily basis will now have an opportunity to come in and see what it is all about. It's a significant investment from OPW uh, who commit, and from ourselves in housing from, for, from Falja, Ireland. And when we look at from the GPO, Connell Street, right the way through to here in the Custom House, onwards to Epic and up to the Docklands, it really is, in my view, a, uh, will be a very, very popular and significant vi visitor attract, attraction. Uh, for our people. So I do just in, in closing really want to commend everyone who has been involved in this from the contractors, from the team in OPW, uh, from our own team here, our liaison team in the Department of Housing, local government have secured uh, this beautiful building again for, for future generations. So thank you again uh, for being here on this really special day in the Customs House. Gurumina Magwith. Market Minister and uh, OPW has had a long association with this building and I'm delighted that you referenced our state architect Kieran O'Connor and right back to people like TJ Byrne caring for this really important property uh, but of course we were delighted to have your department come to us and ask the Office of Public Works now to operate this newly refurbished visitor centre so it's a great partnership that continues between your department and the Office of Public Works and uh, as I say we're thrilled to have the opportunity to take on the visitor centre in terms of operations. 
So I'd like to invite now Minister O'Donovan with responsibility for the Office of Public Works to say a few words. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, uh, um, Rosemary. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Minister O'Brien, um, Minister Burke, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm delighted to be here as well uh, at the opening of um, this visitor centre. Um, this is a hugely significant, um, hugely important building, not only here in Ireland, but um, as Kieran O'Connor, the state architect, will attest, this is of international significance because this building by James Gandon was used as a model not only for buildings of note here in Europe, but it went on to be used for buildings of note, particularly in North America. Um, one of probably one of the world's most famous buildings, the, the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C., and many of the state Capitol buildings around the, the United States of America that would be familiar to all of us uh, have this familiar type uh, structure that we know here as the Customs House. Uh, the cupola or the dome over um, this neoclassical building started off here in 1791 by James Gendon. Uh, and is still very familiar to you know all of the CNN or Fox News type um, uh, junkies like myself uh, that late at night that have nothing better to do than maybe bottle feed a child. Um, it's the, that's the, the James Gandon type building that we're fortunate enough to be uh, here today, restore opening the restored visitor centre here. Um, and Dara is right, you know this will be uh, from our point of view, the Office of Public Works are privileged not only to be able to undertake the restoration, but also privileged to be uh, custodians now in terms of uh, the operation of it into the future. And as a former Minister for Tourism, I'm delighted that Falch Ireland um, uh, uh, partnered with us in terms of not only the restoration, but as well as that, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, custody into the future, um, that we can now operate it. Uh, because as you move from O'Connell Street down into Epic that you will have here um, this magnificent building uh, that has at the centre of it uh, some of Ireland's greatest history um, because not only here in 1791 did the building actually take off um, but uh, the Office of Public Works while we uh, restored it and now are fortunate enough to operate it uh, we also uh, had, uh, can trace our history back here um, back into the early 1830s as well um, but of course, as well as the restoration, uh, for many of people here, they'll see two different types of stone, uh, because when the building was destroyed by a fire in 1921, uh, during the War of Independence, the dome overhead us uh, collapsed, um, and it was decided that um, while the, the whiter, um, more polished, uh, fader, uh, kind of creamier colored stone of the Portland stone, that was brought in from the UK when it was built originally, the Art Bracken, darker stone in the dome uh, was the stone that was used. And I think great testimony has to go to the commissioners of the Office of Public Works at the time, uh, and great credit has to go to the early state at the time in the 1920s. The decision was taken not to demolish this building and clear, clear this site, but actually to restore it to its former glory that we have it here today as the headquarters of the Department of Housing Planning and Local Government. Um, and that then it had to go through um, its own, I suppose, restoration, uh, and that we are now here, and Dara was up on the scaffolding, looking at all the, the stonework and the splendor that's there, um, and it has gone through its own difficulties with climate change and everything else. Um, it has had, I suppose, the difficulties of weathering, uh, not only the difficulties of the fire uh, and the fight for freedom, but as well as that, the difficulties of weather. But the OPW has been joined by a number of different people along the way, Sherwood Associates, um, AXO Architects, uh, um, um, the designers of Bright, Rockbrook, Taught Different, um, Display Contracts International, Storyline, uh, Crowley Model Makers, um, Fallover Art, um, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody else, um, but I would like to pay particular tribute uh, to a former uh, commissioner who recently retired, John McMahon, uh, who's here as well, um, and you might show your appreciation to John for... Uh, who, with the uh, current chairman of the uh, OPW, Morris Buckley, has really, I suppose, um, uh, taken a leap of faith with uh, the, a lot of the restoration work that we've done, um, not only here in the Customs House, but with a lot of the historic properties. Um, as well as that, um, our historic properties division, Brian Farrell, uh, Jenny Deary, Pauline Kennedy, 
uh, and uh, as well as that uh, visitor experience team that are going to be put in place here, um, here in the Customs House that are going to manage it. Finally, I'd like to, to thank um, Minister O'Brien um, and the Department uh, who have given us the opportunity to not only refurbish the building, um, but to operate it now as a visitor experience. Uh, and I'd also like to thank uh, the local community here in, in this part of the North inner city. Um, and we want to be part of the local community here. Uh, and it's very important that we are part of the local community and that we're part of not only the local community, but the local economy. Uh, and that the locals feel that they can come in here uh, because this was very much part of the local community when it was built. Local people worked here. Um, there were customs officers here. There were people that worked in this building when it was burnt. Uh, you know, the stories as you go through, I was here last week, uh, of the lady who said, is there time for me to get my hat? And she was told, Mrs, you'll be lucky to get out of here with your life. Um, so there, you know, we want to be part of the local community and the OPW want to be part of the local community. So this is really a renaissance building. It tells the story of not only Dublin, uh, but it tells the story of Ireland in terms of the various different uh, paths that we, this country has taken uh, in terms of its quest for independence, but as well as that in terms of the future that it has. And what I would say to the Secretary General of the Department uh, of Housing, Planning and Local Government, my former colleague in the Department of Transport, um, I know that uh, there are many opportunities, Secretary General, that your department has in terms uh, of the opportunities that you have for spending. Uh, you can see the great work that the Office of Public Works has done here in this building. Uh, I'm sure that there are many other opportunities that you have. You have loads of money in this department where we hear of all the millions and billions and billions and millions that you have. Uh, the OPW are only looking to collaborate with you in further, in further endeavours that you have in the capital programmes. But I think that this building really will still t it stand the test of time in terms of the relationship that we have between the two departments. It's a very proud day for the OPW and it's a very proud day for the staff that are going to work here uh, for the years ahead in terms of managing um, this building and opening that door out into the Liffey and welcoming what we hope will be hundreds of thousands of visitors per annum into this building um, uh, as they step back in time uh, for the magnificence of James Gandon's and Beresford's building um, for what was Dublin in 1791 right through to Dublin in 2021. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. And uh, I might just echo your thanks for the people who are involved in this project. So this project was delivered as part of a strategic partnership with Falja Ireland, uh, the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage, and the Office of Public Works. And I just want to pay a particular word of thanks to our conservation team and our colleagues in OPW, led by Terry Sweeney. Audrey Farrell put in a huge Trojan work on this project. Um, and to our M&E colleagues, mechanical and electrical colleagues, and I think Connor Byrne is with us today. So a special word of thanks, personal word of thanks to them because they really did extraordinary work on the building, uh, above and beyond what it was maybe initially envisaged, shall we say, on the project. Um, so just finally then, uh, I mentioned that this is part of the strategic partnership that we have with Falsha Ireland. And Minister, you mentioned about us playing our part of, with the local community. And it is fantastic that we are bringing a new attraction to the market in Dublin as part of the Docklands and the local community that is Dublin Docklands. And I know Falcha are in investing a huge amount in developing the Docklands proposition as a tourism opportunity. And we are very excited that the Custom House Visitor Centre will play its part in that project for Falcha Ireland. But they are great partners of ours in terms of projects all over the country. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Paul Kelly now to say a few words. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Uh, Ministers, Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, it is a real pleasure to be here today. And it's a, and it's a particular privilege to be here with so many great friends of Falja Ireland. Uh, first of all, to, to Minister O'Brien uh, and to Secretary General Graeme Doyle, thanks for having us in, in your home. Um, we, um, uh, we work with, uh, we work with, with, with your department on, on so many areas, and we're really looking forward to working and supporting the Housing for All. Uh, initiative through the registration of short-term lets, of course, with the heritage side, uh, Minister Birkin, and in the heritage side of the department uh, we work with, we work with Niall O'Donoghue and his team on, on trying to make the, our wonderful national parks as, uh, as to, to fulfil their full tourism potential, and we're delighted to partner with the team on that. 
Also uh, to, um, to my former colleague, Minister O'Donovan, from his time in, in uh, his, the Department of Tourism, I can tell you there's no one with more passion for tourism from Limerick to Lismore to Letterkenny and all points in between. So it's a real pleasure to, to, to be here with, uh, with, with yourself today as well. Um, also, of course, uh, we have, uh, we've got some colleagues from Dublin City Council, I believe, here. Uh, and uh, we partner with Dublin City Council on, on among many, many things, in particular, uh, at the moment, our Winter in Dublin programme. And that is really to help uh, the Dublin tourism economy recover and survive through what's going to be another very tough, another very tough winter that, that, is, that is ahead of them. Um, uh, also, I believe we have Maureen O'Curran from uh, Waterways Ireland here, and just uh, uh, to say we, we obviously a, a critical part of Dublin Docklands, our strategic, great strategic partners in Waterways Ireland, and we work with them everywhere from here in the Dublin Docklands right over to a really exciting um, uh, tourism master plan for the entire Shannon River. Um, uh, so it's just great, uh, great, great to be here. And also, I have to say thank you as well to, uh, to the Department of Housing, Heritage and Local Government. They've also, uh, they've also given us uh, our, our, our current Assistant Sec General, uh, um, Keen O'Leanon, uh, who has, who's joined us recently and we're working on, on a daily basis. So uh, we're delighted to have, uh, to have Keen in, in our ranks. So thank you for that as well. Um, but coming specifically to, to, uh, the, uh, to the opening of the Visitor Centre here in the Customs House, it couldn't come at a more appropriate time for tourism. After the exceptionally challenging 18 months that the tourism economy has endured, and nowhere has the devastating effect of the pandemic been felt more than right here in the heart of Dublin City. Um, we know that tourism has a vital role to play in the country's and the city's recovery uh, post-COVID, because tourism, as was spoken, can create jobs in areas like this in Dublin inner city like no other sector can. It can create jobs in areas and in communities that other sectors can't create the same kind of employment. And not only does it create jobs, but we know that the money that's spent by visitors stays and circulates in the economy like no other spend. Indeed, 72 cents of every euro that visitors spend stays here in Ireland, and 23 cents of that comes back to the Exchequer to pay for vital public services. So phenomenally important that, that tourism does, does recover. At Folger Ireland, we've been doing all we can to try and help tourism businesses to, to survive. Through the, through the incredible uh, difficult 18 months. And here in Dublin, there's been hundreds of business and tens of thousands of employees have relied on Fulch Ireland guidelines, on grant aid, on training and mentoring, on business support tools, and of course, on marketing campaigns to survive over the last 18 months. And now as we look to recovery, and in particular, the return of international visitors in 2022 and beyond, it is just crucial that Dublin has such a diverse an exciting range and suite of experiences to offer. Because so, we need to cement Dublin not only as a must-visit European city destination, but also as a, an exciting and appealing attraction for domestic and Northern Ireland visitors uh, to, to, to experience. And the opening of the Custom House Visitor, visitor Centre is just one of those uh, essential experiences to doing that. And it's a really exciting development uh, that, has, as, as Rosemary mentioned, has, has been undertaken as part of our strategic partnership with the OPW. And we're also working with, with the OPW on a number of other projects that will come to fruition in, in the next number of years as well, from uh, the Casino Mar Marino, some really exciting projects in, in, in Dublin Castle, and of course on the Phoenix Park Tourism Master Plan. But the opening of this new brilliant visitor attraction also marks a milestone in the Dublin Docklands Visitor Experience Development Plan that, that, that Rosemary referred to. Um, and it will greatly support the development of tourism in the, in the Docklands with other such great attractions as, as, as Windmill Lane and of course Epic. And just as I mentioned Epic, if I can take a moment to congratulate Patrick and Ailish uh, on Epic winning for the third year in a row uh, the best European, uh, best, best visitor attraction in, uh, in Europe. So congratulations to the team at Epic for that. Um, but they, this custom house here will form a gateway into the Docklands regions for all of those other attractions. It will really help to showcase the rich heritage and growing tourism offering of this area. So we're really pleased to support the development of, of this attraction. Of course, what, what we all know is one of the best known buildings in Dublin skyline. The architecture that we can see all around us, the history and heritage that are steeped into the walls of this building, uh, they're part of the story of Ireland. And it's a story that we know that visitors 
want to see, they want to feel, they want to experience and immerse themselves in. And they need to do that via modern and engaging visitor experiences, just like what's been, what's been brilliantly built here. So bringing Dublin and Ireland's story to life in such an, an authentic way as this does will entice both domestic and international visitors to explore this part of Dublin, to stay longer, to spend more. So just finally, before I close, I would like to take the opportunity as well to add on behalf of everyone in Falch, Ireland, uh, to acknowledge and say a massive thank you to, uh, to John McMahon for his brilliant work on the collaboration and developing of our strategic partnership. We'd like to wish him all the very best uh, for his retirement from, from his role as commissioner, and also just take the opportunity to, to congratulate uh, Rosemary uh, on, in her new role as Assistant Secretary and say how excited we are and looking forward to working with Rosemary going forward. Gormila Makov. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, and this is my first day in the job, <laughs> uh, and I could have been at home staring into a screen on meetings, uh, but what a privilege to be here in one of our finest buildings in the country for a very special occasion and a great event on my first day in the role. So uh, I, 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 carry the, uh, I carry the weight of the privilege of, of this role now, I have to say, but, but uh, thank you so much for joining us all today for this special occasion. Uh, in particular to the ministers for taking time out from your busy diaries to join us. And I think we have one last piece of officiating to do, if that's okay. We actually have a ribbon and we're going to cut it. <laughs> so I think there's a magic scissors somewhere. Uh, we do have some light refreshments and if uh, friends and colleagues and, and guests would like to join us upstairs for some, some refreshments, that would be fantastic. And we'll just invite our distinguished guests now to actually do the official cutting of the ribbon. Thank you very much.